He was wearing sandals, leather sandals, and I do remember that the sort of shoelaces were kind of a three, four inch each. They were not thin. His sandals were light color, probably beige. Yes, that was the color. Jesus was fit, very fit. He was like 6.1 foot tall, had a curly brownish hair. Not hanging down to his shoulder, I would say, just like a man that hasn't had a haircut in nine months, no more than that. His hair had some blondish highlights, like if he had been living right next to the ocean. He had broad shoulders. Jesus has a beard. His beard was only one inch grown, no more than that. His arms were the arms of someone that has been working in the woods, at a lumber yard, or probably a construction worker. What got my attention was that Jesus has aged in heaven. He died at 33, but now he might be like 38 or 39. He was definitely in his late 30s. Make no mistake, Jesus is not a youngster anymore. He is close to turn 40 anytime soon. His face was rugged and was not the face of a 29, 30, 31, or 33-year-old man. He has definitely aged. Before he would make his last move, he allowed me to visualize his face without revealing it to me. He let me see his face in a different vision, not on that encounter like saying to me, I know that you want to see my face, but I won't reveal it to you now. However, this is my real face. I will let you see my face in a separate vision while I'm standing in front of you. And all of the sudden, I'm seeing Jesus' face in a separate vision. And to my surprise, he had thick lips, a strong, robust nose, but I couldn't see his teeth since he never opened his mouth. Now, since I have had the opportunity to travel all around the world, and since I believed, how he was going to look like most people believe pretty much. Sephardic from Bethlehem then. He was supposed to be a dark olive skinned Jew from that particular area, but not. Jesus looked like those Italians from the northern part of Italy, bordering Switzerland, Germany, Austria and Slovenia. I was in shock. He was Caucasian. He kept pacing and pretending that he was about to make a decision, but he has some doubts, like thinking, should I? Will he be able to handle it? Is it the right time? Will he change his ways? Will he ever follow me? Is he my right choice? Am I wasting my time with this guy? He was very confused with me, extremely disappointed, to the point that at a certain time of the encounter, he would ask himself, what the hell am I doing here? He was getting tired, but not physically tired, just tired of me. His eyes became more intense and I realized that he was about to make a decision. His pacing became more agitated. He would look at the floor at certain times and then go back to me, staring at me. He was so sad about me that he didn't want to regret about the decision that he was about to make, like wondering about me. Will he? Can he? Will he ever listen to me? Will he change his mind? Will he finally follow me and obey me? and I knew he was ready to deliver his verdict and hit me. By the way, while he was pacing, I had the feeling that he was going to throw a punch at me that for sure was going to take me down. He grew both of his hands, I would say, easily 10 to 12 feet long, and, in a sudden lighting bolt, extended his arms reaching out to me sort of violently. His hands landed on my heed, touching the bottom of my foreheed and both my ease and the vision was over. He disappeared. I woke up or I was relieved from the vision, but the reality is that he was no longer in front of me. Days later, I understood that Jesus was wearing a thick rope, since at the office where we were at was winter season. It took me more than six months to finally understand that he had been graceful and forgiven towards me, and that he had a message and an assignment for me. Not only I would go through the worst time of my life where my wife's left leg would be amputated, but he would had to be forced to remove from me a variety of bad habits that were impeding the purpose that he had for my life. At that governmental office, he communicated me that I would be running for president of a South American country, but that in order to be prepared to serve my people, he would have to not only purify me, but pretty much rebuild me from head to toes. I want to mention that, in fact, prior to this encounter, I had already started a presidential campaign. His rage and disappointment are unforgettable, but his mercy 
overrides the terrifying time that I had to go through this encounter with the Creator. His message was very simple. You don't have many options. In fact, this is your only option. Whether you follow me or you fail in life, you choose. It's been two or three years ever since. I no longer drink beer, and yes, I'm eagerly building up a campaign running for president of this particular country in South America. Will I make it? I don't know. All I know is that whatever happens, I will always rest in God's hands.